Hello everyone, a 46 year old female patient presented with chief complaint of one episode of seizure and left upper and lower limb weakness since 10 days. And there is an extra axial lesion which is T1 iso intense, T2 iso intense and player hyper intense to adjacent gray matter and there are like multiple flow voids in the lesion and the lesion is causing combustion over the adjacent frontoparietal gray matter and there is an extension of the lesion into the adjacent bone and extracranially into the scalp. CSF cleft sign is well appreciated here with CSF space between the lesion and the adjacent gray matter and there is a white matter buckling sign here which denote the extra axial location of the lesion. These are susceptibility weighted images where there is no evidence of hemorrhage or calcification within the lesion. On diffusion weighted imaging, the lesion shows a diffusion restriction with corresponding decrease in the ADC value, reflecting the high cellularity of the tumor. This is an MR contrast image where you can see clearly the homogeneous enhancement of the lesion. This is MR spectroscopic image where you can clearly see choline peak which is increased and NAA peak which is reduced and alanin peak here it is it is increased and uh, lipid lactate depleted peak. The differential diagnosis what we considered for this case are meningioma, hemangiopericytoma and metastasis especially from breast carcinoma. But the histopathological diagnosis turned out to be malignant meningioma with nuclear atypia. Meningiomas are most common non-glial tumors of the CNS and has second highest incidence rate among all the tumors of the CNS. And malignant meningiomas are rare and they account for almost about 10% of all meningiomas. They have aggressive local growth and has high recurrence rate. And these lesions are extra-axial and few, are, few typical signs of extra-axial lesion are white matter buckling sign, CSF cleft sign, intervening cortex between the mass and the white matter, and dural tail sign. Coming to the types of meningiomas based on their location, they are supratentorial, tentorial, and infratentorial. And in supratentorial, cerebral convexity meningiomas and parafalcin meningiomas, etc., are there. And in infratentorial meningiomas, CP angle meningiomas, petroclival meningiomas, foramen magnum meningiomas. There are many types of meningioma based on the histology. Meningothelial meningioma, fibroblastic meningioma, and transitional meningioma. These three are most common and together constitute almost 80% of all types of meningiomas. There are other types of meningiomas here. These are the few cases of meningioma which we encountered in our practice. This is a tentorial meningioma which turned out to be meningothelial type of meningioma. This is the most common type and this is the characteristic syncytialness of this type. This is a foramen magnum meningioma which turned out to be a transitional type of meningioma. And in this case, you can see the avid enhancement of the lesion along with the adjacent dural enhancement. This is the characteristic dural tail sign. And this lesion is causing compression over the adjacent brainstem. And this, this is a clival meningioma which is causing compression over the adjacent brainstem. And this turned out to be microcystic variant of meningioma. And in this lesion, transitional T2 hypointense signal intensity is a characteristic. And in this microcystic T1 hypointense signal intensity is the characteristic. This is a right frontal convexity meningioma which turned out to be angiomatous type of meningioma. The characteristic is increased vascularity that is hypervascular tumor. And this is a right CP angle meningioma which is causing compression over the adjacent brainstem. This turned out to be secretory type of meningioma. And the characteristic is this has a predilection for skull base. Characteristics of malignant meningiomas. They generally invade the adjacent brain parenchyma at the skull adjacent to the tumor. Numerous mitosis happens in these lesions. They have increased cellularity and necrosis is common and nuclear pleomorphism is seen and metastasis is seen in these lesions. Coming to the imaging features of malignant meningioma, no findings are actually reliable. The features which are highly suggestive of malignant meningioma are mushrooming, that is prominent panacea tumor extending well away from the globoid mass and absence of calcium aggregates, heterogeneous enhancement and contrast studies and indistinct margins, necrosis. Then comes your controversial or unreliable signs of malignant meningioma. They are marked preditumor edema, osteolysis, cyst-like areas, and tumor density. In summary, imaging plays an important role in diagnosis of meningiomas. We can attempt to diagnose histopathological type of meningioma based on the imaging characteristics.
MRI is the modality of choice. Diffusion weighted imaging helps in diagnosing atypical and malignant meningiomas where you can see diffusion restriction with increased cellularity and reduced ADC values. And follow up scans are always helpful to find the progression of the tumor into higher grades. It is always better to mention the grade of the meningioma because treatment pattern alters. Thank you. Hope this video was useful for you.